Welcome. There's been so much disinformation going out onto YouTube about what the sun is doing that I thought I should start up a series which explains what's happening on the sun currently. I'm going to hope to do this every month. So this is the first edition of that. So this is covering January of 2019. Here we have the sunspot number as a function of each day in January marked in blue. You'll see there's a large swath of days in the middle of the month where we had no sunspots at all. Now it turns out that these two groups of sunspots are actually the same group returning. Here it is in the first part of the month. You can see the sunspots there in the top right. I have blown that up to show this region. It's called Active Region 2732. You can see it has a very strong leading spot with a bunch of weaker trailing spots following along behind. Here it is a month later. They renamed it 2733, but it's basically the same region. The leading spot has developed somewhat, but there's a lot more spots in the trailing part of the region. The question is, will it return a third time? If it does, the first spots will appear over the East Limb in the middle of February. Is that likely? Well, we can take a look using the Stereo spacecraft. And you can see over in the left hand side of this, there's a region, quite a strong region, just behind the East Limb of the Sun, marked here with a dashed line. That would cross that line in three or four days time. And so we should start seeing spots about then. However, the question is, is this region still strong enough to produce spots or is it just going to come back as a plage? Well, we'll get some idea of the level of activity from these coronal images on uh, SDO. If we start seeing a bright region coming over the east limb a day or two before the spots are due. We can also check the SOHO spacecraft and see if there are any coronal mass ejections being emitted from that region, which would indicate there are some flares still going on in it. So we'll just have to wait and see a few days to see what's going to happen with that region. Let's take a look at some movies. I'm going to show you five different movies. One is a sunspot movie taken with the Solar Dynamics Observatory's HMI Continuum channel. The second one is the same instrument, but using its magnetogram, so you actually see the magnetic fields. The third one is the low temperature corona taken with the Solar Dynamics Observatory's AIA instrument at 171 angstrom. That corresponds to about 600,000 degrees Kelvin. The next one is the high temperature corona image taken in AIA 335 angstroms. That's about two and a half mega Kelvin. And then outer coronal images taken with the SOHO LASCO instruments C2, C3. Note that the region doesn't uh, come over the east limb, but re-emerges in almost exactly the same spot, about halfway across the sun on the 23rd. The region actually appears earlier on the magnetic data on about the 19th as a small bipole which grows rapidly as you can see here. Now let's take a look at the quiet corona and the one thing about the quiet corona that always amazes me is it isn't all that particularly quiet, just about everything is changing and moving all the time. If you look at the two poles of the sun, you can see the polar coronal holes are well established now. The southern one looks slightly larger, but that's just an optical illusion because the sun's tilt is away from us. So we see the southern hemisphere more clearly than the north. Next, we take a look at the hot corona at about two and a half million degrees. And there's not a great deal going on there, except for there's lots of little bright points all over the sun that are flashing on and off. These are small magnetic bipoles that are interacting with the uh, magnetic field of the sun and are uh, appearing and disappearing in a matter of days. Lastly, we take a look at the outer corona as seen through a coronagraph. And you'll notice that there are some coronal mass ejections even at this quiet time on the sun.
The bright object skirting along the bottom of the picture is Mercury. Then there were the flares. I made some predictions and they seemed to come true. On the 25th of January I tweeted, Sunspot region AR2733 continues to grow and become more active. Would not be surprised to see a sea flare out of this in the next day or two. Note the rising x-ray flux. Within 12 hours of me making that prediction, the region produced a C5 flare. The first flare for a very long time. As a result of that, the very next day, on a YouTube uh, video, I predicted the following. More sea flares likely. This was made fun of by GSM News, much to their subsequent embarrassment, because within two days, we had this, three more sea flares. I'm going to show you three different movies of these flares. One in the 171 Angstrom channel, which I'll remind you is about 600,000 degrees Kelvin. One in the 335 Angstrom channel, which is about two and a half million degrees Kelvin. And one in the very high temperature channel, 131, which is about four to five million degrees Kelvin. We'll start with the first flare on the 26th, that's there, and then there's three more flares just as the region approaches the limb. And then it looks as though there's more activity even after it's gone over the limb. The flare should be much clearer now in this higher temperature channel. There's the first one and the other three as they appear close to the limb. The flare should be even more evident in this highest temperature channel with a temperature typically of between four and five million degrees. The region seems to be getting, if anything, more active as it goes over the limb. Well, let's take a look at the status of the current solar cycle. This is the sunspot number traced over the last 13 years from the Solar Influences Data Center in Belgium. You can see, for example, that we've had for the last two years or so, uh, days with zero sunspot numbers and likely to have a lot more like that. But I'm more interested in the forecast that the SIDC comes up with. Here is one of them, which is the standard curve option, which takes the average shape of a solar cycle and just projects where we are now to the future. And that would put solar minimum sometime in 2019 or early 2020. And that's the model I've been subscribing to all along. Another version puts a sudden onset for solar cycle 25, which will likely make it a very strong cycle. And that says we're either at solar minimum or just past solar minimum. And the indicator that this is a possibility were those reverse polarity regions that I've talked about in the past. Those are very early signs of solar cycle 25 and might be an indicator that we could be following this route, though personally I doubt it. So let's see if we can summarize all of this. It's been a busy month for sunspots. We had two sunspot regions, actually it was the return of the same region two weeks apart. My forecast is that region will return again but much weakened. Overall solar activity has been low but there have been some coronal mass ejections and flares. My conclusion is from the solar cycle status that we're not quite yet at solar minimum. My forecast would be later this year or in 2020. You heard it here first. Until next time, goodbye.